everybody. My name is Céline Ross and I'll always be like that. And uh, well, next week is Valentine. Huh? Are you ready? You want to do a little something special? A new um, nightgown, should I say? Déshabillé? I don't know how to say, but something just cute. So I'll help you out. It'll be very easy. Okay. So I'll change the camera and without my glasses. Ay, 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 yeah, yeah, one, six. Okay. Okay. So we stay on the same team, you know, lace. Some people ask me, email me this week saying, how can I, how do I find, how do I know, sorry, um, if it's freestanding lace or lace to be applied on some fabric. Well, if the design does not say FSL, well, it goes on the fabric. So you see, these are on fabric and this is freestanding lace. Okay, so this one is there's only one design that I repeat, copy, paste four times into the digitizer MBX. Uh, it's a built-in design in the digitizer. Okay. And it's made onto organza. This one also is from, uh, is, is on organza, but for people understand good, I reply, I do the same thing on cotton this time. Organza is thin, huh? To give it a little bit of strength, I use two layers, while cotton is stronger. So it depends what you like. Do you like on cotton? What, what do you prefer? Either one is good. It depends on you. This one is because it's a leftover from uh, my Infinity Quilt fabric. Okay. And the rest, you're, you know, we did it last week. It's freestanding lace from uh, a built-in, uh, some, some built-in design into uh, or 15,000 or Skyline S9 or um, 550E or 12,000 also. You know, every machine has built-in freestanding lace and it tells you what's in when it goes onto fabric lace for fabric or lace for freestanding lace so you have to be careful okay i'm sure you you're well aware of this now so to go on to these fabric you have to be careful what you choose i have two layer of organza and this one is strong so my design is the pink one is um, dense more density while here you have less density on the design but the topic of today i really want to show you how to work with with real thin fabric this is not organza this is um, i'll tell you in french crystalline it's even thinner Thinner, you see the weave, the weaving is even more less dense than uh, uh, organza. It's gonna work, no problem, and I'll show you my my garment after. So trust me, it'll work and it'll be nice. Okay, so I have the fabric, but I need to to prepare my machine, my hoop, my fabric to do a very good job. Huh? Everything is in the preparation. So there's two ways you can do it. You know, Genome Canada is a distributor of uh, uh, Madeira product or stabilizer or thread. So you, you know what we did last week. We used Madeira Avalon Plus. It's like a fabric but as soon as you put it in the water it dissolves by itself so if you want you can put your fabric in the hoop with the uh, uh, stabilizer in the hoop at the same time it has to go <coughs> sorry in the hoop 
you know, for needle or floating, it's not for me. And I'll prove it to you with this design. Okay, this is organza. Everything was in the hoop. Look, the dark embroidery is at this right place. Not a little bit far, not, a, not in, just at the right place. Okay? And this is because the preparation was perfect. Sometimes people say, oh, why this is going just a little bit outside or inside? Well, floating and needle, it's not the proper way. You know, we're working with delicate fabric, really. So we have to, to do, to prepare it good. You don't believe me, do it your way. You'll end up with a problem. Ah, Celine was right. Okay. So I need to prepare first my hoop. I'm choosing a small hoop here because I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to do the embroidery there for 30 minutes. You know, my, the, the embroidery I choose is three minutes. So, uh, so how do I prepare my hoop? I made sure that the thin fabric won't slip. Look, you remember this? the rubbery or polyurethane uh, and it'll, it'll hold the thin fabric in place so i i stick one band on top and one band at the bottom on the bottom part if it's not good you know place it better than what i do okay here there's no never a problem because of the round because it's round here, it's holding very tight, but here it can become loose. So I prepare my hoop number one with those strips. Let's say with time, you know, they're gonna come, uh, they're going to be uh, uh, dusty or uh, not dusty, you know, fabric will uh, fiber, um, bat, uh, uh, I, I don't wanna say batilizer, I should say uh, batting, batting. You know, and then one day they, they won't be good anymore. You remove them and you put another strip. And if, when you run out of this, was Janome is selling, so there's no problem. You buy a few, uh, you buy a package and uh, you're okay for a little while, okay? So, I want to just lift this. Okay, here's my very thin fabric. Look at the difference between the two of them. You see the density and see the density. Okay. So this is more dangerous than, than that one. Huh? So I insert my fabric. Uh, no, uh, two ways. I'm going to show you my the first way and the, the way I prefer after. So I have to put in the hoop in the hoop and water soluble stabilizer with the uh, crystalline or organza both in the hoop but there's something else that madeira sells so i'm going to insert my fabric and it holds very oh no i don't like it because there's more on top than at the bottom okay now i'm okay Okay, make sure it's all the way in and it's tight good so you see and this time I will use Avalon fix same thing as this one but it has glue at the back so I pre-cut I don't have long nails, me. Okay, got it. Oops, okay. Okay, see, it's sticky on that piece of paper. It is it is sticky. I'll remove this. And at the back, I'm going to apply it. And make sure it's okay, solid. Okay, 
ready to go. So I'll attach the hoop to the machine. Whenever I show you something, it works on any machine. Huh? I should say most machine, not any, because uh, if you have a, a model that is a uh, hundred years old, uh, it won't work. Okay. And I choose a design from red work. You don't want to choose a design that is uh, um, very dense on this light fabric. This one is ultra light. Huh? So again, I start. Oh, I ask my machine to pick up. Bon, where's the scissors now? Okay, I'll use my hands. Okay, so I'll let it go. Clip my thread, keep my thread in my can for another day when I'll have enough left over and I'll let it go. I don't like to go that fast. I'm 600 stitch a minute now, but oh, it always depends, okay, um, of the fabric. The needle, it's a, sorry, blue tip needle, you see? Because it's very thin, so blue tip needle. Honestly, blue tip, red tip, and uh, purple tip needle, uh, you can do a lot with those three. Regarding embroidery, of course. Yeah, of course, if you embroider jean with a thick uh, thread, of course, you have to... Um, change the, 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 the needle okay so I let it go two more minutes but at least to see it work if I go a little bit faster just to see if I'm 700 700 stitch a minute now and I didn't want to choose such a dense design and I'll do this and while it's doing the embroidery I'll show you. Look how dense this was here, but not here. Not here. This one is thicker than the rest. And I did a good job. It's done. The good job is done. Why? Well, I did it on two layers. Do you see? Two layers of organza. But the result is the result is perfect. Look at this. A nice dish or a nice vase of flowers, it's beautiful. This one also done on two layers, but the result is perfect. P perfect, see everything at the right place, everything, all the outline at the right, right place. Okay, well, this is because the preparation was well done. Okay, one more minute, but. So let's say you have to finish the, the to hem curtain or something sheer. You have to hem it. I look at this. It's just uh, it's just perfect. Of course, I would do it on a, on a double thickness, but I want to show you the the worst to prove you. It's finished. Okay. Clip the cut the thread. Uh, I didn't ask. You know when you ask the machine to cut your thread, what's happening? Look at my stitch. So it pulls the upper thread to the back, okay? And it cuts the upper thread and the lower thread at the same time, uh, it's, it's here. So I will remove the excess. Okay, I'll change my change the way of okay clean it a little bit because of the stitches ah. because I copy paste the same design so I have a little bit of thread in between huh? okay look at the result isn't it perfect so what do I do now Hold this up. 
we're not cheap we are we like to save uh, we're sewers we like to save I can keep this I can reuse this somewhere else when um, see I put it back on my sheet okay if I want but you know you don't want we don't like to throw stuff that we can reuse of course huh? and you cut with your one of the general miss scissors be careful not cutting the thread of the embroidery okay sometimes you need just a little bit and you say oh i shouldn't throw it away well okay whoops no okay and here okay and here you don't have to do this uh, you don't have to do it but you can soak the whole thing in into the water right away but why not and what do i do now with this remove okay you see just before i was teaching into french and i went to rinse it look at the result oh, you don't see very well i'll put it on the gray Look at the nice result. I didn't, I didn't iron it. And to iron this, what do you do? You go to the ironing board, of course. Protect, protect it. It's still wet because I rinse it. Protect with um, uh, a cloth. Steam it, then steam it again, and it'll be flat. You won't have those little, uh, but it's not bad at all. Huh? So here, what I have to do now, soak it into the water. This will melt away and this will dissolve. And then uh, clip the thread here. I don't like that, but uh, just clean it and it's good. So imagine you have to do it f uh, at, the, at the bottom of, uh, of a hem. So perfect, so perfect. And it's nice and soft and I use here regular thread from Madeira so the thread size is um, I don't remember by heart but uh, so close to size 50 if you want this even softer you can go and use a thinner thread okay I use the same thread in the needle in the bobbin same thread okay now you see i see then of course this is on uh, just a sample well i did my homework you see i save these i save these and i reuse them somewhere else okay you know you save on these little thing to buy a big expensive machine but that's okay so now look I cannot go closer because my stand doesn't uh, extend more. Oh, no. My stand doesn't extend more than this. Oh, maybe here. Okay, so the, the it cannot go further than this. This is a, a gown, a, a nightgown, I should say, nightgown, okay? Pure silk on a bias. That's why it's so fluid, you know? And look at my design. It's a rose but my thread is 100 weight okay the design is not dense just so so light sorry i don't want to touch your boobies but uh, okay now now you cannot see my other design so i'll put this under to show you and i move the camera look at this and this is a knit it's a sheer uh, sheer I, I don't know if I have the right word but it is and this is um, 
uh, satin but not this one here this is stretchy fabric and this is um, uh, woven fabric but look at this it's just perfect the result huh? just perfect so what what I did in the big hoop of course and I used the same technique I just showed you and then I soak it to melt and you finish it's it's you know it's just a little bit more just maybe you, you say oh I have no time to sew maybe you can find something at the store and just embellish with embroidery you know more than half is done uh, when you buy something already made but plain okay then here what I did I'll um, okay I'll pull her close to me the other thing I want to show you is this is satin look at the um, oh I need to find out the word uh, shell tuck shell tuck so here it's shell tuck but here is your serpentine stitch narrow and stitch length short so this decorate it's more feminine more feminine than just straight and here it's decoration but also I couldn't do the same stitch here you'll see why but you see when you wash your garment or when you wear it you don't want to see the seam allowance here so it holds it my seam allowance everything is done on the serger of course eh? because uh, hey, this is so what I say this is stretch see this is a knit and this is a woven fabric okay the result for this will be a bit different on stretch fabric the end on a woven fabric so let me show you my other sample I'll move stuff it's clean when I start, but then changes. Okay. This is, um, you know, this is a long t-shirt, long, you know, uh, below the knee to go to bed, okay? Very easy to make. No pattern. It's like a t-shirt. One seam on the shoulder and one seam on the side. That's it. So I hope I did it on a serger. Yeah, I did it on a serger. Okay. So four seam. Trust me, five minutes. It's done. Huh? But then I want to do the finishing. To do the finishing, I'll show you. I'll do this the sample. So I did those shell tuck. I'm talking about shell tuck now. I should talk to you about uh, the lace in front. So I finish the neck, finish the two armhole, and finish the hem, the bottom. And you see how I did it? Run. So really, there's no pattern to do this. Guarantee you can do this in one evening. To three hours, the max it's done. Okay? So what I did here is a bit... Uh, you know what let me show you first and then I'll explain better and here just because we are in uh, Valentine and the lace team I should say okay so I did this design on organza but I could do it as lace these are built-in built-in lace so I could do it so what do you do you do your whole nightgown you do the whole thing then you apply this where you want and you do the zigzag all the way not all the way around just where see like here this is what I wanted to cut you do your zigzag cut the fabric be careful here cut the fabric and it's done look at this if you prefer you can insert lace instead 
and you see i'm showing this to you on a this is a stretchy fabric it's like a t-shirt i'm showing this to you here but let's say you have a blouse you have um, uh, any top it's too low it shows you know your a bit your breast and you're not comfortable add this just add a little piece it'll be you'll be feminine you know just by adding that little thing and they'll see and they won't see you know and i did this one in cotton but it's more thick but you know you play with your thread we have we have thread that huh? trust me we have thread so um same thing this one i did only on like last week only on madeira avalon plus plus okay two layers two layers and then i rinse it and i end up with uh, with my lace exactly exactly like those designs there uh those lace not, not that one but all the lace you know all this is built in huh? in in genome machines some is from one machine some is from another machine me, me i try them all and uh, i like uh, i play with it okay so now let's go and learn how to do the shell tuck now i don't want to do embroidery anymore i want to sew okay sewing so my embroidery arm is going into place close it but i cannot go i can't use my shell tuck why because i don't have the right needle plate so i remove my straight stitch needle plate for lace i remove the, the thread remove the yellow dot to bring all my stitches to the back okay I will insert my regular uh, bobbin holder and my regular needle plate, the zigzag plate. Okay. And everything back to place. And uh, of course, I'll change the foot. Huh? I won't change the color of the fabric. I'll, I'll do just a little sample to show you. So red, you'll see well. Okay, always finish with a screwdriver because our hands are not uh, our hands are not strong enough to attach the screw very tight. Huh? So you see here, I will not cut my fabric uh, my my thread because I won't pull it out. This is another another technique. Okay, I need my two thread this time to the right to my right to the right because i'm starting in uh, stretchy fabric or thin fabric and i need help to start so I, i'll help i won't pull i'll just help to start just help to go at the beginning and then i can cut my thread okay so i prepare a sample and it's stretchy Okay, I'm folding the width of the, the foot, see, about the width of the foot. I'll show you after how to remove all this, okay. I have to work on the right side of the fabric, but I have to choose the, uh, the stitch. I'm working on a 15,000, but let me show you up here. Okay, uh, this is the stitch here. This is the pictogram, this one. This one here. So you see, it's open. The rest are, it's not. You see, it's, uh, is it the one solid, not blind hem? for woven fabric blind hem for stretchy fabric and this is a shell tuck 
I hope I have the right word, but I'll find out with my application. Okay, so I'm going into my application, my t-shirt, and this is what I want. Oh, it's in French. I think it, I, I'm pretty sure it's shell tuck. This is what I want. And I have three choice, narrow, normal, wide. Okay. Okay. So I will do normal. Look what it does. Look at the, keep your eyes here while I'm changing the design. Ah, wider and more space. So anywhere you are, you have to obey to the reaction of your fabric. You, you, that you have no choice. So maybe it'll be good. Maybe you want to change what the, the machine proposed to you. Okay. Let's start and then we'll change a few things. When I asked my design, my needle went right away to the, to the right side of the stitch. So you see, I'm holding my thread under the foot and at the start. So what I do first, needle down, put my fabric against the needle down and start to sew and I'm helping whoops I'm helping to start with my thread and I don't want to go that fast because I want to show you you see the needle on the right I won't go fast you see it stitches and then I have to go outside, I have to sew outside of the fabric. If you're inside, it won't, be, it won't look good. This is exactly what I just did. Okay, outside of the fabric. Stop, cut the thread. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm in French, I'm sorry. Shell tuck shell tuck nice okay now we'll come back here now i'm going to choose large and i'll, I'll go more in detail oh it depends your taste the reaction of the fabric but this time i'm going to open the next window okay and you have more information here you know, we don't see everything here. I can see the width and I can see the placement and I can see the width. I want it, let's say I want it even wider. I can go up to nine millimeter. Or I'll stay at seven. My fabric is not too thick. But let's say you have polar fleece. Oh, that would be nice, nine millimeter. So I can change the width of the fabric, the length, let's say 2.5. And this is what I like about when it's pre-programmed. The machine knows you have to increase the uh, top tension of the thread, the top thread tension. See, it put it, put it at 8.2, okay? If you don't have this kind of machine, even if you have a, a, a basic machine, well, you can adjust the width of the stitch, the length of the stitch, and you have to increase the tension of the needle of the top thread. That's it. So you'll have the same result as uh, this big machine. But this big machine is thinking for me. It doesn't let me do any mistake. Uh, I, I forget nothing when I ask the... Um, the um, the application okay so I'm okay again I'm coming back here and I need my thread okay to help myself to start I'm I'm doing this on the right side of the fabric and uh, Okay, no, hold on, I have to hold it first. 
Okay, under the foot, start. I'll go very slow, okay. Just for you to see. See, I'm outside the fabric and you see my hands are pulling just to help to start my fabric going at the back. And then I'm okay to go. Uh, maybe, no, I wanna go faster, sorry. Because my stitch is outside of the fabric, it'll do um, a, a shell tuck, a, a tuck or a shell tuck. And I forgot to tell you, I prefer F2 foot. I really see the reaction and if I'm okay. And the result won't be as nice if you stitch in the fabric. You really have to go outside the fabric. Stop, okay. Cut my thread, okay. Well, now you have a big difference between the two of them. Look, the width, the width and the distance in between the previous. See the difference in previous? I hope you see well. I think so, yeah. Okay, shell tuck, okay. So this is the way I embellish everything. So, oh yeah. So now what do you do after? Oh, I fold it very big. Then I don't have the right scissors, but any scissors can fit, but I prefer the duck bill, you know? And then you remove fabric, you know? Well, uh, knit fabric doesn't fray. But uh, the other fabric, uh, the woven fabric fray. So you, you left some, you leave some. Okay. Look what I did here. Oh, it's messy. Yeah. So the neck, reverse, armhole, right side, wrong side. But at the end, I didn't remove it. Not, it's not why. I left a little bit to give it, uh, to be a little bit heavier. I didn't want to wear it like this, you know, it comes back up. So I left just a little bit wider. Okay. Shell tuck. Embroidery, embroidery on very, very fine fabric. Here too. You see, you don't see it very well here because uh, there's no color behind. But this is a sketchy rose. Okay. So, uh, embroidered with the thread size 100. And I'll switch the camera. Am I back? No, it's here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, uh, and I did, and I'm wearing one little heart, you know, it's it just, it's Valentine. So I'm getting ready just in case I receive chocolate to gain weight again. Okay. No, I'm, I'm joking. Okay. So I wish you a good week. You have a busy week. You have to make your nightgown. So, um, enjoy the week. Happy sewing, embroidery, enjoy everything. See you next week. Next week will be, uh, no, I won't, no, will be the day after Valentine, but we celebrate the whole week. Bye bye, everybody.